the spark inside of you. What ignites that spark in you and gets you to burn your flame bright? As human beings, we all go through challenges. We have ups and downs. And for many people, as they age and they go through life's experiences and get a few kicks and knockdowns and challenges, they have a tendency to give up on that spark inside of them. It just seems safer to go through the process of doing the same thing in the same way because then there's no risk involved. But what if I were to tell you that there is a spark inside of you? It's just like a pilot light on a gas stove. All you have to do is give it some fuel and voila, you have a raging fire of enthusiasm, inspiration, creativity, and resourcefulness that you can apply to absolutely any area of your life. After all, that is what you're wired for. You're not meant to do the same thing day in and day out in the same way, just hoping to hit some bigger numbers so you can get that bonus and buy that next vacation property. Really what you're all about is you're hardwired to expand. You're hardwired to ask for more. You're hardwired to create from your imagination. We know this as little kids, as children, we live our lives, our entire reality functions around our imagination. We can manifest and create miracles just with our thought and in the power of our mind. Because we haven't lived yet long enough for the adults that are around us to convince us that our imagination is our head in the clouds, and that life really is not magical, that it's a lot of hard work, it's a lot of hard knocks, and you just have to learn to struggle and suffer like everyone around them. And so when you're brought into this environment that life is not about your imagination, it's about facing reality, you gotta be realistic then what happens is you actually start to dumb down your imagination. And when you dumb down your imagination, you dumb down the spark that is within you. Now, in one of my previous videos, I was talking about the different ways of being intelligent. We all know EQ, emotional intelligence. It is the latest buzzword in the realm of business. And it's nothing new, really. It's just been branded and presented in a new way and finally embraced by the business world, looking for a cutting edge to make the teams more efficient, to make job satisfaction higher. And honestly, I really, truly believe it's about hitting higher numbers. It's always about driving home those numbers. We know about IQ, the intelligence quotient. It was drilled into us as kids, you know, what's your IQ? How are you scoring? Are you able to memorize that content in that textbook and regurgitate it out onto a test to show us how smart you are? But what about all the other intelligences? What about your spiritual quotient? Your ability to tap into the quantum field, the infiniteness of this universe that we live in, and to actually trust your intuitive guidance and to know that whatever answer you're seeking, you have a way of connecting to that and you can guide yourself or be guided through yourself through pretty much any experience that you have. When you can tap into that spiritual quotient, you can truly raise the bar on your faith, on your trust, and frankly, on your ability to expect to win. I believe that this is where our whole entire spark either gets squashed 
or gets increased. Now, as an adult, it's your job to keep fostering your growth. I had a conversation this weekend. I was up hiking the trails and on Saturday I did about four and a half hours. I literally did not want to come off of the mountain. And this raises my first step that I want to present to you today in this video. I have five different steps for you to follow. And my number one step is spending time alone. We have so much constant bombardment and overload on our senses with technology, with conversations, with social media, with just being around so much population that we really lose track of what's true for us. We lose track of our own imaginary process and how we might conjure up something that's completely outside of the realm of what we do every day to take care of our responsibilities and what we call our job, our career, our business, our work. And to actually get into a space where we can open up ourselves to receive higher levels of thought, higher levels of inspiration, and it just might enable us to declutter, de-stress, and take the sensory overload down off of our nervous system. So this is what I like to do. I like to spend as much of my weekend outdoors. I maybe do one to two hours of checking in on my business only if it's absolutely a necessity. If it's not a necessity and it can wait till Monday, then it waits until Monday. And I have found that by doing this process of completely stepping back and Actually, I take pride in how much time I do not spend on my devices and I just let myself have an agenda free weekend. Now, if we're pushing on a project, if I have a big speaking engagement somewhere or I'm teaching a program or perhaps I'm flying to another country and working on a project, obviously I'm going to be engaging. But again, you know, as a laptop lifestyle, I get to make that decision because I don't live a nine to five life. I live a creative life. Even though I'm in business, the, my approach to business growth is very creative. It's not linear. It's certainly not following some kind of digital process. And so, and by digital, I mean, the digital functioning of your mind where it's all based in logic and linear functionality. So spending time alone, and this is, you know, I was thinking this weekend when I was up on the mountain, if I was a physician, I would literally write a prescription to my clients and say, you must spend at least half of each day on the weekend outdoors in a park, in nature and if possible engaging with animals away from all the craziness of your life. If you have children, take your kids, take your spouse, take your family, pack a picnic, get outside, find a tree, throw a blanket on the ground and actually kick back and ponder the sky. <laughs> There is nothing more invigorating, more inspiring, and more thought provoking than doing just that. Most of the great leaders and inventors in our world spent a great deal of time outdoors. They went for walks. They got into an appreciation for the elements. Didn't matter what the weather was. They got outdoors, they moved their body, they breathed deeply, and they connected with nature. 
Now, if you're fortunate enough to have access to animals or you have animals in your family, spending time with your animals is a tremendous way to hit the reset button. I used to have a dog and a cat and between the two of them, I was completely cocooned in unconditional love and the connection to this agenda-less life. I mean, their whole existence is just being who they are. I believe that this is something as human beings that we have forgotten, that we're human beings first and human doings later. And when my clients follow this, they actually are more fulfilled, more happy, more healthy, more productive, and then that plays into their business and they become more profitable. So spending time alone, spending time in nature, getting outdoors, going for walks. I was in the middle of a four and a half hour hike and I came up with an absolutely amazing solution to a client that I've been working with, helping them scale their business. And I just sat down and I took out my phone and I typed it all into a note and boom, there it was, I've got it. That's something I could have spent a day with a whiteboard in my office figuring out for them. So it just increases the negative ions. It gets your mind to trigger in different ways. Resourceful thinking isn't about grinding it out in front of your computer or in front of a device in an office. It's about being in a space within yourself mentally and emotionally where you allow the information to come through. And the way you do that is just letting go of resistance. So when you stop trying to actually figure it out, the resistance gets out of the way and the answer is like, it pops into place. So that's my first step for you. Number two is going after what you want. Now this may not have anything to do with what you've been taught you're supposed to want. This may not have anything to do with your current employment or your current business. I'm not suggesting you give up your employment and I'm certainly not suggesting you give up your business or sell your business or leave your business. What I am suggesting is that there is a whole lot more to you than what you're currently doing for an income. Even if your business is the most fulfilling business you have ever could ever imagine finding yourself in, I love what I do. I eat, sleep, breathe. I, I live for what I do. I love what I do but it's not all of me. And so there's so many facets to who we are as a human being. It's really important to go after what you want and do it unapologetically. Now, how does that not become selfish and narcissistic? Well, a couple of things. One, when you go after what you want, you actually become an example for everyone around you to see what you're doing, to feel your energy as you engage in going after what you want. So it encourages them just to the energy of you being more of you. And when you go after what you want, as long as you're not causing harm to others or eliminating other people's choices or limiting people from their potential. It's, it's absolutely a inspiration and it really feeds into the fabric of the expansion of the universe. So going after what you want has nothing to do with taking away from others. And you see, I think this is the limiting belief that we have been fed for so very long that if we go after what we want, then we're actually limiting others and it becomes selfish. And I, I really disagree. I think that going after what you want, as long as it's not causing harm to anyone, actually, it actually inspires others and it actually encourages others to go after what they want. 
in their way. All right, number three is be accountable to what you're doing, what you're creating. And this is energetically, this is emotionally, this is mentally, spiritually, and at the same time, take credit for what you're creating. So you can be accountable by, you know, you could look at the biggest upheaval in your life and you could say, oh, wow, I created that, wow. And you can also look at the greatest accomplishment, the greatest achievements in your life and you can say, wow, I created that. I actually brought that to fruition. As long as you're being equally accountable as you are to taking credit, then you essentially put yourself in your power, in your power seat to be able to create more of what you do want and to take your focus off of what you don't want and then to channel that energy into creating what you do want. Next is number four, be sure to help others. Being of service is probably one of the most fulfilling experiences you could ever have. And that could be some of the most simplest things. Now, being of service to others isn't always about giving. Being of service to others can also be about receiving. So when you need help, be willing to ask for it and then be in a receiver energy so that when people hear that you need help, they also feel that you're receptive to receiving help. And there's nothing to be ashamed of if you need help. We are social animals. We are not alone on this planet and we all have skills and gifts and talents and experience that maybe someone else doesn't have. So when we get to come to the table and give and help someone, that blesses us too. So this notion of asking for help, make, being weak or that receiving help uh, puts things out of balance is simply just not true. Receiving blesses the givers as much as giving blesses the receivers. And then finally, to truly be a leader, it is about listening. Now, one thing that I do when I'm in a meeting, and uh, whether it's with a client that is looking to have us work with them or whether I'm in a facilitating process helping an organization grow with their leadership team I'm doing a lot of listening and if you're in a meeting and you're part of a team listen let everybody else go let everybody else have their say and then come in from the rear and state your comments, state your suggestions, bring solutions to the table. So often when I'm in a boardroom and I'm, I'm part of a, a board or a team and there's this ego fight for position about who gets to go first, who gets to be the most convincing, who gets to have the strongest point of view, it, it, it waters down and it actually diminishes the person's power that's fighting to be on top. When you really want to be in a position of power as the greatest contributor, and I don't mean a position of power over others, that's not power, that's control. <laughs> that's another video. I'm saying when you want to be in a position of power, bring up the rear, let everyone have their opinion, their point of view, their say, hear it all, receive it all, calibrate accordingly, and then bring to the table 
taking everything into account and consideration, a point of view, a solution, a resource, and then you truly lead from within instead of trying to have power and control over everyone and browbeat people into submission. And with that, your leadership will grow exponentially. So I'm Deborah Peters. This is my five steps on how to ignite, ignite the spark in your life and in your business. And I look forward to chatting with you more. Definitely hit the subscribe button, click the bell so that when I upload future videos, you will get a notice and receive those in a timely fashion. Look forward to seeing you and I'll talk with you soon. Ciao.